Um, so there was a, uh, they were giving them a high uh, credit uh, ratings, sometimes up to the uh, triple um, A ratings. Well, you know, investors are usually hard to fool, right? You can fool, you can fool like uh, 10 investors, but you cannot fool uh, millions of investors. So they kind of knew that something might happen, you know, and there might be the defaults, and if there are defaults in the uh, mortgage markets, it will bring the price of the underlying uh, houses down, and it will kind of like increase the risk of those securities and lower uh, their returns. So what they started doing, they, 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 they tried to diversify their risk away by entering into such called credit default uh, swap transactions. And the credit default swap transactions, this is just buying an insurance against default, right? So, and one of the major, pretty much the only corporations which were selling those uh, credit default swaps was this uh, infamous, infamous company, company which also got bailed out by the United States government, AIG, right? American, American uh, International Group, probably like you, you, you've heard of that. So again, from the kind of financial innovation mathematical point of view, those credit default swaps, they're like beautiful things because they, they work as the, ins as, as the insurance for uh, the insurance against the default of the counterparty, right? So you can diversify tho those risks. But the problem there was that pretty much only one company was selling those credit default swaps uh, contracts, and as th the number of defaults you know, in in increases, they also got into trouble. You can think about those credit default swaps as the insurance uh, for your car. They work the same way. You make a payment, right? You don't expect the total loss of your car, right? You might get, you might get into... Uh, car accident, right, but it's a low probability event, right? So you make a payment, but if there is a car loss, if you get into a bad accident, the company will pay you the entire value of your car. This is how those credit default swaps um, work. And so the, and the insurance companies, I mean, it's always a good business for them, right? Unless all the customers get into accident the same night, and that's what happened, right? So it's pretty much the entire market, all the customers got into accident the same night, so AIG, I mean, they just could not uh, honor, uh, honor all the claims. That's why the U.S. government had to step in and bail them out. And uh, I mean, it's not the end of the story. It's still like a big mess because there is still like, you know, uh, you, you, you can pretty much eliminate all the insurance companies, then you drive your car without insurance. Is it the better, the better world or not? If without in car insurance companies, probably it's not a good state of the world, right? So we need car insurance companies. So we need companies like this, but we need kind of... Um, I don't want to say we need more of them because, you know, <laughs> like, uh, so this is, uh, so the first, the first myth, whom to blame, right? So in, 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 in press, including American press, Canadian press, originally from Russia, especially Russian press, you know, uh, United States is to blame, right? Every blames the United States. So, I mean, you can think of like Uncle Sam or uh, Greenspan, right? Well, Greenspan is a little bit to blame, and he actually made kind of like almost a public apology, right? So uh, Alan Greenspan, the former chairman of the uh, Federal Reserve uh, System in the United States, I mean, in, 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 in those circles, he was like, uh, if he was not considered as the, being the god, but at least semi-god, semi right? And, well, he's blamed for catering the stock market too much by keeping the interest rates too low, because when interest rates too low, stock markets keep going up. So he's partially blamed for you know, creating the system, creating at least temporarily the system of uh, low interest rates, which encourage, uh, encourage more and more, uh, 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 more, and more uh, housing transactions during the era of uh, interest rates. So this is the first myth, and I, cannot, I disagree with that. I disagree with that because uh, it's not that, uh, as I said, it's not only that the Wall, Street, uh, the, the Wall Street tried to sell those securities. They cannot sell anything unless the rest of the world wants to buy from them, right? So I don't think the United States itself is, 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 to, is, is to blame. Wall Street sells what international investors want to buy. So there was enormous demand for those types of assets. And an example I sometimes give here, they could sell anything they wanted, right? They could sell anything they wanted because other international investors would have bought it. So there was great demand for uh, seemingly safe assets. Uh, changing demographics and the creation of wealth in countries like China, uh, Russia, and, and Brazil. Uh, baby boomers retiring, lots of wealth. 
right? This wealth has to be invested somewhere, right? Uh, and unfortunately, this is the category of people now pretty much kind of like uh, suffering the most people who are losing their uh, uh, pensions. So in general, the world was requesting a safer asset. So those mortgage-based securities, they were not safe. I mean, they were safe as long as the property values uh, were going up, right? They were not safe, but they looked as safe securities because they had uh, government guarantees and they were given good uh, credit uh, ratings. So there was, a, in general, there was a wonderful business, like, you know, lots of parties going on on the Wall Street. So while things were going well, and uh, again, it's kind of like, uh, some kind of like, uh, example, it's, it's, it, it works as a demand for parking spaces. So when you want to park your car, you try to look for a safe parking space, right? You don't want to park your car in an area where you know that, you know, it will, uh, it will get uh, breaking into. So the United States market usually creates the safe parking places for the entire world, right? When you don't wanna, when you want a lot of risk, you might wanna invest in Chinese stock market, right? If you don't wanna take too much risk, you try to find something risk-free security in the United States. So the United States just didn't have enough secure parking spaces. There are lots of cars, lots of investors, international investors from all over the world trying to find a safe asset, right? And there were just not enough safe assets around the world. So they pretty much started buying whatever they kind of like, whatever looked, looked safe. Well, at least for a little bit, the finance theories um, uh, are on holiday and we need to kind of like rethink how we would uh, price those securities, because now you have those securities and nobody even knows you know, what's inside there. So the major, th this is what's called like the market breakdown. I mean, it's okay if the security value is low. It's all right if, like, you know, if, if, if investors lose money, but the worst situation is that when you look at this piece of paper, you look at the security and you don't even know what's in there and you don't know, even know how to price it. Because once you can pinpoint the price, once you can, once you can price something, you know, the market is restored, the market is liquid. If you don't know what's in there, and it's very hard to figure out what's in there because, I mean, the price was clear when there was an active market for those securities, mortgage-based securities. Right now, the mar market is kind of frozen. So all these mutual funds, all those pension funds, they're stuck with those pieces of papers and don't even know how much it's worth, right? And a part of the United States government bailout package was to give the money to buy those securities back from the troubled banks, right? But the United States government doesn't know what they're worth either, right? It's usually, you know, it's, it's, it's usually if the market cannot figure out, if the market cannot figure out what those pieces of paper are worth, I mean, what can you expect from the government, right, to, to price those securities? So they, they try to resell them on the auction, but it's still very, very hard to figure out because it can be, you know, the, the no number of mortgages from, uh, from hundreds of thousands of people with different probabilities of default, even using complicated models, you know, you just don't know what those uh, pieces of papers are worth, right? And that actually me messes everything up uh, in terms of the accounting numbers, right? So you have banks that were buying those mortgage-based securities, right? Before there was a price, now there is no price. So you don't know even what the balance sheet assets and liabilities look like. So if you look at the balance sheet of the banks right now, you don't even know whether they're in good standing or not good standing, right? And especially this is relevant in emerging com economies when people kind of like start, 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 start panicking and there are long lines from the banks uh, to the banks trying to withdraw money. And this is the worst uh, situation we might find ourselves in if you kind of like stop trusting the financial system and you try to withdraw your money uh, from the banks. This is uh, the worst one. So to avoid it, we need to figure out how to price those securities uh, what's, what's, what, what's, what's, what's left in there. And let me give you some kind of uh, unappetizing example. This is, how, this is how I think what those mortgage-based securities are. I mean, I tried my, I, I mean it's, I tried my best to explain it, but I'm, 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 uh, this is probably like a better way to explain it. So if, if, if you're, if you, unless you're like vegetarian, so if you eat meat, right, you go to a butcher. Yeah? You go to a butcher and you buy a piece of meat, right? Then let's say there's a mad cow disease, right? Hopefully it doesn't happen, right? So you get severe food poisoning, right? At least you know where you bought it from. Once you know where you bought it from, you can, tra 